This seems to have been the month where I was really craving shorter books. Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrew's Wizardly Reads, and as always guys, I am Andrew, and today guys, today we have got the monthly wrap up for April of 2024 here for you, but before we get into that, please like this video and subscribe to the channel as it does help the channel grow, and you can check the description box down below for links to all my social media, including information about my Patreon and the links to the Discord. That said guys, let's just dive right on in because it has been an interesting month of reading. I've got a lot to talk about, and at the same time, I don't know what happened. Because, like, I had this plan, and I was like, I'm going to re-embrace the TBR. That didn't happen. That didn't happen at all. I still got a lot of stuff read. I got a lot of shorter stuff read. Um, let's talk about the stuff I attempted to read, because, like, mood reading was a heck of a thing. So, I tried, like, two or three times to get through Bastion by Phil Tucker. And let me tell you what, this isn't bad. This is still on my TBR, still on my shelf. In fact, I'm going to try it again next month. This is one I want to keep trying and trying to get through until either I know for a fact I don't like it or it sticks and I read it all the way through. Because frankly, like I would get like a couple chapters in and then like something else on my shelf or on my immediate like TBR would call to me. Plus, like I said, it's the month of the shorter book. This is just a big thickum and it wasn't quite calling to me. So I haven't quite been able to nail down Bastion quite yet. We're going to stick it right over here. Then I was like, you know what? Like maybe, I would, maybe I'm in the mood for a fantasy Western. So I tried the last stand of Mary good crow by Rachel Aaron. And this one is very good. I got about 10% into this, but again, it wasn't quite what was calling to me at the moment. So it got put back on the shelf. So that is the last stand of Mary good crow. I forgot the, the second, I forgot what the book was called for a second. I can speak. But uh, yeah, I got about 10% into this one, and I was really, really enjoying it. It just wasn't what I needed in that moment. The same goes for the next two books. I got 20% through A Blade for Hire by Christopher D. Brand. Another fantastic book. We've got this very competent mercenary who kind of takes on this quest, and he doesn't really know what the quest is. Like, he's trying to work for the church, and the church people are being cagey, and they're not giving him all the information, and he's just like, ah, like, I, I have to take care of you, and I, I don't know, I was just really enjoying it, there's a really kind of interesting magic system, I loved the combat, I loved the world building, I loved the characterization, not what my brain wanted in the moment, but I was hooked, so again, this goes back on the shelf, and the same goes for the Hero Interviews by Andy Ewington, this is really great, it's like a transcribed interview, like each chapter is its own separate interview, and each chapter has like 20 or 30 like really funny um, footnotes that kind of just kind of build on like stuff. Like there's running jokes throughout the footnotes that I really, really enjoy. And there's also like references to like Star Wars, uh, Lord of the Rings. One of the ones was like it was a dwarf with beard buns. Like Princess Leia's is buns, but it was beard buns. I, I literally started laughing. I got about, um, ignore the bookmark, I got about 26% through this one. And then, like, my brain just went, you want to read other things. So, these are the books that I attempted. Let's talk about the books I DNF'd. And it could just be that these books weren't for me, or I was in a particular mood. But, as of right now, I have no immediate plans to come back to these books. We've got Seeds of War by Zhao F. Silva. And I got about halfway through this one. And it's decent world building. It reminded me a lot of the first law. There's, I think, three different POVs. I just wasn't particularly invested in the story at any given time. And after I got, after I got about halfway through this one, I just, still not being invested, decided to move on to something else. So this one isn't bad by any means. It's very well written. It's just not quite what was working for me. So that's Seeds of War. Gorgeous cover, though. This is Smokesmith's number one. Zhao is amazing. So, I mean, this is available on Kindle Unlimited, and there's an audiobook. Be sure to check this one out. Maybe it'll work for you, um, even though it didn't work for me. We've also got Theft of Fire by Devin Erickson. This one is a sci-fi, kind of in the vein of The Expanse. If you've been looking for something that's kind of like The Expanse, that's going to scratch that Expanse itch, 
this one is for you. Now, this one had two unlikable protagonists. I know they're not meant to be likable, but in the moment, I wanted something likable. And then there was just a lot of mentions of SpaceX, uh, sometimes 10 to 15 times per chapter of SpaceX being Elon Musk's company. And I was just like, uh, I, I'm not kind of here for that right now. So I just kind of moved on after about, I think, 10% through this book. That was another D DNF. But if you want something that's kind of like The Expanse, that is for you. Then we've got Andy Pelequin's Child of the Night Guild. This was another DNF for me. I got about eight chapters into this. And this just isn't quite my speed. I was expecting something a little bit more adult, a little bit more faster paced, a little bit more grim, bloody, and stuff like that. And I think this one, I just, I, I fell subject to the... Um, expectation uh andy does have i believe it's called uh, different not damaged which recently just got a rave review from my friend k from case and shelf you can check that review out right there um that made me really want to read that one so i'm not quite done with andy peliquin if you know andy Pe andy peliquin he's very very prolific and so there's a lot of stuff to explore throughout his body of work and so i believe um different not damaged Sorry, I struggle with the D and D. Um, Different Not Damage is the next Andy Pelequin that I am planning to check out. Unfortunately, uh, Child of the Night Guild just didn't quite work for me. It read a little bit on the younger side, and I just overall wasn't invested by about eight chapters in. And then the last one is Dawn of Wonder by Jonathan Renshaw. Now, this one is a great kind of... It's very long, but I would say this kind of... Borders the line of YA and middle grade. It's that kind of very basic introductory fantasy. It's incredibly well written, but it just overall like wasn't my speed. I kind of found it incredibly predictable and it wasn't pulling me in. Nothing was exciting me. Nothing was surprising me about it. It was just very easy to read, very digestible. And this month, that is just not something that I was looking for. So again, this also fell victim to the old DNF by the wizard. But with that out of the way, we can now talk about the stuff that I did read. And we've got, I believe, 13. And we're going to start about the stuff I don't own digital. I don't own physically, which means they are digital. There we go. I can speak. I know what I'm saying. We've got The Elder Race by Adrian Tchaikovsky. One of my patrons was just like, hey, I'm currently reading this. And I was like, hey, uh, that's pretty short. I, do you mind if I join you? And he was like, yeah, sure. Why not? So um, me and Aaron decided to kind of read this and chat about it a little bit. It's fairly short, so there's not a whole lot to talk about, but I give this one about three to three and a half stars. It wasn't anything mind-blowing in the vein of o ogres or put away childish things, but it was solid, it was interesting, and overall, I really enjoyed the premise. It's more of like, we've got this primitive kind of colonized world, and then old earth has kind of set up an outpost, and this anthropologist, He's going in and out of fugue sleep. He's now like 300 years old. He's lost contact with Earth. And they kind of think he's a wizard. And they've kind of come to him to help solve this demon problem. And it was it was very interesting, very well done. And I thought it was worth the read. But it's not going to rank up with my favorite Tchaikovsky's. I then finally came back and finished the last 40% of General of Israel wandering in number six. And let me tell you what, even though I struggled with the first 50%, 50 to 60% of this book, the last 40% absolutely was a home run and brought me back into the series. I do have a dedicated book review that should be dropping early May, early May, early to mid-May, that book review should be out. And then I will be continuing the wandering and hopefully in June or July, I'll be starting book number seven, which is the beginning of the next arc of Wandering in. And then I picked up on a whim, Necromancer called Gam Gam. And uh, I'll put the, the cover right there. Uh, because I think it's Adam Holcomb is the author's name. Anyway, this is like 110 page cozy necromancy. And it completely caught me off guard. Gam Gam is this... She's this grandma necromancer who started studying necromancy in her dotage. Uh, because she wanna, she wants to call back the spirits of her grandkids because she misses them. She bumps into this little girl who's on the run because somebody wants her for her magic and she kind of takes her under her wing. And they kind of, I don't know, it, it's weird that the necromancy is like cozy because her father's just been killed. She's running for her life and Gamgen's just like, yeah, I'll be the grandmother figure. And they kind of, 
they're very healthy for each other, and I will be having a dedicated book review for this. Also in May, I believe, is when that will be coming out. It was a really good read. I don't want to talk too much about it. Make sure to check out the review of Necromancer called Gam Gam because it was it was just it was so much fun. I, I was smiling and reading it. Like there are certain portions where I was like, that's horrific. Why is this cozy? I don't I don't understand how you've pulled this off. Anyway, I think book two in this series comes out, I think, in Q3 of 2024. I'm very excited to check it out. Next up, we have got <clears throat> Your Blood and Bones by J. Patricia Anderson. And I do have a dedicated book review for this one as well. I don't know if I've scheduled it to come out last week or this week. But anyway, there will be a dedicated book review. Or has it already dropped? I can never remember when I schedule things. Um, you would think that after three years I would know what I'm doing. I don't. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. But anyway, Your Blood and Bones by J. Patricia Anderson is another novella. This one was incredibly good. We've got some unnamed protagonists. There's a little bit of body horror in this one. They've got like feathers growing underneath their skin and they can like pull them out and they've got like bone shards and stuff that they can pull out as well. Um, bone spurs, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Shards, spurs, and they can kind of burn them and get magical effects to control the dead. They're on the run trying to survive and find a cure. It's just, this one was really good. And I'm just so glad that I have finally read this. Putting it over here. Next up, I finished Robert McCammon's The Providence Writer. And I, I talked about this in the mid-month wrap-up. It was good. The, the premise seemed a bit flawed. But overall, like, I thought it was very good. And I hope that we kind of explore the premise in further Matthew Corbett books. Matthew keeps kind of trying to keep people at arm's length. I'm not a huge big fan of that. Like, we do a lot of character growth and reconciliation in this one. And then we kind of take a step back at the end, which I wasn't the biggest fan of, but we will see where the series kind of takes us moving forward. I hope to do at least book five sometime this year. I don't know when that will be. That'll probably be closer to spooky season. It may not be spooky season, like, you know, Halloween and fall and all that, but it'll be around there. So that's kind of my goal, fingers crossed. Just some more that I talked about. We've got Kraken's Tooth by Anthony Ryan. Very good. Not as good as Pilgrimage of Swords. Pilgrimage of Swords? Was that it? Yeah, I think it was Pilgrimage of Swords was book one. Kraken's Tooth is book number two. I did enjoy this one, though. Um, I do struggle with kind of the dichotomy of, like, you know, Pilgrim has two different names. And I was just like, ah, just call him Pilgrim and that. Because, I mean, these are super short. I don't really need his old name. I would rather he just be called by one name. That's my really only critique here. We kind of still lean a little bit more into the Lovecraftian stuff. And I'm just overall really enjoying the Seven Swords. I think I've also talked about Dandelion Wine, which is a collection of short stories set in 1928. Fantastic Ray Bradbury. This is one of my new favorite books of all time. I consider this pretty much a flawless masterpiece. We follow this young boy as he discovers the magic of childhood and boyhood. And then we also follow some other characters in the twilight of their life as they reflect on what's important and what makes life worth living. It was just incredibly well done, and it just captured a vibe for me that I absolutely loved. So Ray Bradbury's Dandelion Wine was amazing. Uh, this prompted me to buy, like, ten more Ray Bradbury books slash collections, which I now have a Ray Bradbury collection. Yay! I then caught up on... The kind of Raven's Blade, Raven's Shadow series by Anthony Ryan. This is where we are currently sitting at with Valen Alsorna. I hope that Anthony Ryan will be coming back to this world because it is kind of left open-ended and I would like at least a standalone to close it out. Uh, hopefully it would be a beefy standalone. I know it could be quite a while until we come back to this world because... Anthony is getting ready to release a Norse series, which I'm very excited about. I don't even really like Norse fantasy all that much anymore. And just because it's Anthony Ryan, I'm going to be checking that one out. I'm very excited. We get a very kind of... I don't want to say it's a solid ending. Like, I definitely enjoyed Wolf's Call more. This one was like four stars. I felt the ending was kind of rushed and a little convoluted. And it just overall was a hair on the messy side where we kind of, I was expecting this confrontation to kind of come to a head 
and it doesn't really do that. And so I was left kind of wanting a little bit. I was expecting, you know, meeting on the battlefield, big, gigantic clash. And I didn't really get that here. So that's my main complaint here. Characterization, world building, and lore, all that's still incredibly good. I was just left wanting just a bit more of a climax with this one. Then, of course, The Third Kingdom by Tao Wong. This is book number seven in A Thousand Li. And let me tell you what, like... If we had to start Wu Ying's next arc, next arc like this, I'm glad it was just kind of like this tournament murder mystery type of deal. It was very, very good to read. I really, really enjoyed this. Now, some new stuff that has kind of popped onto the radar since uh, the mid-month wrap-up. I kind of put out to my patrons because I was feeling the call of Stephen King. And I was like, what King should I read next? Should it be Different Seasons or should it be Skeleton Crew? They selected Skeleton Crew, so I didn't read Skeleton Crew. What I did read was The Mist, which is 135 pages of Skeleton Crew. And I was like, you know what? That's a novella. That's a short book. And I just kind of moved on from there. I enjoyed The Mist. I didn't love The Mist. I did like the Lovecraftian aspects of it, where you've just got this mist, and you've got these creatures in the fog. They could be like interdimensional beings. And they track people kind of by, like, scent. And we've got all these people who are just dying. I don't know. I really enjoyed The Mist. It was it was a very, very interesting read. But I think I will come back to Skeleton Crew at a later date. And I might do different seasons next just because I am craving those novella-length stories. And I believe, like, different seasons is four novellas just kind of stitched together. So I might do that. And then, let's see. We've got The Never Ending Story. I did, oh, it helps if I show you the front cover. I did read The Never Ending Story out of this folio edition. And let me tell you what, like the first 60% of this was really, really good. The last 40% had some kind of diminishing returns. It was still good, but I was kind of checked out after that first 60%. Um, the end, I felt really kind of nailed it. Like the last two chapters was just amazing. But that falling action where we've got Bastion, Balthazar books kind of going through Fantastica and dealing with, like, re-breathing new life into it and making all of these wishes. Like, the first few bits where he's still very much Bastion is very good. The thing is, is, like, the more wishes he makes, the more he loses his memories of who he was. And he kind of turns into somebody unrecognizable, which is the whole point. But, uh, I mean, it kind of devolves from the first movie but it also borrows heavily from the second movie so i mean i can see certain aspects of it but I, again the first 60 percent pure magic the last i would say 40 35 to 40 percent i was kind of ready for it to be done but i did read it this was a great reading experience i've done plenty of shorts on this premium edition and it is well worth the money if you are going to read the never ending story i do highly recommend the folio edition and then just a couple things left to talk about i am currently 70 percent through ashes of man i do have a couple days left in the month this is book number five by christopher rocchio in sun eater i'm loving sun eater i'm all in on next up i'm gonna go back and do queen amid ashes then i'm probably going to do dregs of empire before i jump into disquiet gods but this has been really good. It's not my favorite. I can kind of tell that things have been split up a little bit just because there are some pacing things that I think were done better in books two and books three. And then book four and book five has a, a couple pacing issues where I think Christopher did the best he could because, you know, if you don't know, I guess if you don't know, books four and five were initially one story. And then because of the paper shortage, they were split and some rewrites had to be done. And while I think he still masterfully executes both books, like, don't get me wrong, they're still amazing reads. I can still kind of feel that split a little bit. Uh, and so these don't end up being my favorite of the series. But I know in a recent interview with John from Talking Story, he said Disquiet Gods was the book he wanted to write when he started writing it. There was no splits. There was no interference. It's very very much what he was planning to write, which makes me very excited 
to read Disquiet Gods. But I got a couple things to read before I can get to that. Queen of Mid Ashes, very good. I should be wrapping it up probably tomorrow. And then also in the next couple of days, I'll finish The Last Colony by John Scalzi. I tried reading the, or I tried listening to this on audio a while ago. I bounced off of it and then I kind of picked it up on physical and just sank right into the story. And I've been off to the races ever since. I'm currently 40% of the way through this. I will finish this up before the month is over. And then literally the only thing I will be reading for the rest of the month is The Prydain Chronicles by Lloyd Alexander. And hopefully this resonates with me. I know it's a kid's story from the 1960s, but everybody I talk to says that this holds up. It's been on my shelf for about a year now, and I know Nico has been really excited for me to read this. He actually bought me this copy, so we shall see what all the fuss is about. That's all I've really got for you today, guys. I've got some DNFs, I've got some stuff that's going back on the shelf to be tried again later, and I've got about 13 books that I ended up finishing. Tell me in the comments down below, do you agree? Do you disagree with my thoughts? How did your reading month go? I just really like to chat with you guys. Let's have a good old discussion in the comment section down below below and make sure to tell me your favorite book of the month that's all i really got for today guys so till next time peace out stay magical bye and as always i want to give a huge thank you to my patrons thank you for supporting my passion and my hobby it means the world to me